Turd back with you here. Got another one for you. This is my cylinder off the, the new to me bike, the 92 slash 97 CR125. I'm going to be building this bike for myself, so I want to make it right first time. Not that I make anyone else's bike not right. It's just uh, I plan on keeping this thing a while, so I want to I want to do it up right the first time here. And I uh, got the engine split. Uh, everything looks good so far. I'm just going over the cylinder now and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you the process of doing precision measuring. I'd done a previous video just using these with just a, a digital caliper, which is fine. That works fine. But if you're going to be doing a lot of these and uh, you, or you're just the type of person that needs to know exact numbers, you definitely need to get yourself a, uh, a dial bore gauge and a proper micrometer. What I'm about to show you isn't for the average home gamer type thing really. Uh, I kind of do this on the side a little bit. I make a little money off this. So I've invested in these tools, but uh, I don't expect the average weekend warrior to invest in this stuff. And I'm not really speaking to those people right now, but more so the, the people that want to get into it or just for a reference of uh, how easy this really is if you have the proper tools. The whole point of what we're doing is we're measuring the bore size of the cylinder. This is a nickel plated, or nickel sorry, uh, yeah, nickel silicon carbide plated cylinder and uh, we don't want to put the wrong wrong size piston in the hole here otherwise you're just asking for issues. So the only real good way to tell what size of hole you have is by physically measuring it. Some manufacturers, Honda included, see it's got the mark A right there. So this is supposed to be an A cylinder and they come in different sizes. But again, don't just look at the stamp, especially on a used bike and think, oh, okay, well, that's, that's the size of the piston. I'll buy one of them and Bob's your uncle. Don't do that, especially if you're buying a used bike. Either you measure it yourself, like I'm about to show you, or have somebody measure it for you. Uh, if this does in fact need to be replated, I'd like to know now before it's too late. Anyway, let's get into her. So some pretty basic stuff, uh, what we're gonna need. Again, I've shown a video using these before. These are pretty inexpensive. These are $30 set. You can find these on Amazon or wherever. Harbor Freight for you Yankees. And I got this at Princess Auto here for myself in Kanakistan. These work fine. Just like I say, it's not as uh, exact as this stuff here, a uh, legitimate micrometer and a dial bore gauge with different size fittings. This is a two to six inch uh, bore uh, gauge here. And uh, by the way, everything I'm gonna be doing today is in inches. It's just what it, what these tools are reading in. So keep with continuity's sake and we're going via inches. On that note, a very nice thing to have, obviously, is a manual for what bike you're working on. This stuff is available online now. Oftentimes you don't really need a manual anymore. You can even find these uh, for free online. But I happen to have one, it came with the bike. So this is what we're looking at here. So these are the new measurements and the service limits. So it looks like they came with two kinds of cylinders back in the day. Cylinder A, a little bigger than cylinder B, as you can see. And then we're gonna be going in the bracketed numbers here. The bracketed ones here are in inches. So when we do it too, we're obviously gonna take the measurement in a few different places. This climber manual says four different spots. Uh, here, here they are, the dimensions of them. I wouldn't get too hung up on getting exactly, you know, 0.8 of an inch down and whatever they say here. Uh, I would just check it in as many places as you can, just uh, for the fact that, uh, yeah, I like it's it's difficult with the ports, right? To, to be able to measure. Uh, accurately like you're not gonna be able to get the little little tit here very easily on this exhaust bridge you kind of can't really measure the center of the cylinder just because the the ports are in the way so you want to get a kind of a base idea so you take more measurements than too few average them out and that'll give you a baseline for what you're looking at really quick introduction to those of you that don't know how to do this there's better videos out there explaining this it actually is pretty straightforward I'm gonna go ahead and just for reference, set this up to the B size cylinder, the smallest size it could be, which is this number right here, 2.1247 inches. Basically what this is gonna end up looking like, this this is a two to three inch uh, micrometer here, obviously. So we're 2.1 is right here. Okay, now I wanna roll it till I get to the 2.4. And we're gonna go, because it's 2.47, we are gonna go past the 24, but 
it not to the zero because to the zero would be obviously uh, it would look like this 2.1250 that would be two and an eight so that's that's not really what we're after here there's the 24 sorry for my shaky camera work but we're not at the zero then you go up to the ten thousandth marker up here and what you want to do is spin it so that the the only line that's lined up on this range here is this seven so it's actually going to end up going oh my god it won't focus it's going to end up looking like that where the nine on this part the nine here is irrelevant don't worry about that just know that the line for the nine is uh lined up with number seven right here and you lock it right here so you're almost at the zero, but not quite. So you always take the lower number. Anyway, like I say, there's much better videos out there explaining on how to, uh, to read one of these and set it up, but hopefully that made a little bit of sense. And if not, whatever, I tried. So next is setting up the dial gauge itself. Now keep in mind, this is temperature dependent. You want the reference gauge block that I have here to be the same temperature as the workpiece you're working on, because keep in mind, things change with temperature, obviously, more than you'd think. So I'm zeroing my uh, micrometer here to the current temperature on my two inch gauge block. And then you put in your dial bore gauge uh, after you've set your micrometer to the cylinder size that you are looking to measure. I always go for the smallest size and you zero your micrometer accordingly. Just rock it back and forth, look for the peak, and put your zero there. Okay, so I got it set up here, pretty shallow through the top and again I'm going fore and aft uh, not side to side because uh, fore and aft movement is going to be where it's uh, the pistons wearing into the cylinder walls mostly. You can do a few going perpendicular but uh, I'm not as worried about them as I am the fore and aft so I don't know I'm about call it a quarter inch down from the lip of the cylinder and uh, what you're going to do is just I still have my zero here of course right to check whether you're square up and down you just basically it's a feel thing like you're just rocking back and forth you'll see the needle peak and then start to fall back off that means you've gone too far so you just rock it back and forth to see where it peaks and then that's your actual measurement there so it's kind of hard to do this holding the phone at the same time because i'm actually walking it up and down the cylinder a little bit which i don't really want to do but you can get the gist of it basically so there i'm at a peak there if i continue to push the the tool to the left it's going to come back down if i go back to the right peaks and you keep going too far right it goes back down too right so you just basically wiggle it till you get to where the needle is peaking and that's your measurement right there pretty straightforward and just repeat that all the way down it's a good idea too once you do get your measurement to write it down for your own records kind of keep track of where things sit um, you can check it on your next top end and uh, yeah so we'll go down we'll check it in each of these spots do it perpendicular as well and uh, yeah go from there and here's a good example as to I say this lots <laughs> why you need to do this every top end and especially if it's a new to you bike uh, this is the cylinder we just measured this is the 97 this is the one i will be running it's still within serviceable limits uh, i don't think i'm going to send it out right yet this is the spare cylinder for uh from a 92 that i have here uh, it's an ebay find i got it for dirt cheap and uh you can see why in a second here so again most people Weekend warriors, oh, I'm gonna go do a top end. Yeah, slap a new piston in her cylinder. You hold it up to the light. Oh yeah, it looks good. Yeah, 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 no cracks, no nothing. There is a ridge here, but it's not horrible. You get the usual ridge. This is uh, top dead center. This is as far as the ring scrapes. It, uh, you can feel it, it's not crazy. It's certainly more of a ridge on this than, than on this, but this one has it too. But watch this. I'm gonna go exactly the same depth. When I say exactly, I mean my eyeball exactly, so get off my back. Look at the difference. Like I say, visually, you'd pick the cylinder up and you'd say, well, fuck yeah, bud, let's send it. And this is a 92, but the bore size is the exact same. There, I'm almost 2,000 uh, bigger on this guy than the other one. And I'm no mathlete, but Assuming we're set up for, I'm set up right now for the uh, the A cylinder. This two and an eighth. So if you, this is the service limit here. I'm two thou bigger than the five. So 
Again, I'm no math lead, but you turn this six into a seven and uh, that's too big. And that's just in one spot. I did go farther down on the cylinder and uh, it gets even worse. I can't stress it enough, guys. Uh, you don't need the fancy dancy tools that I have here. You can, like I say, get, get away with just these. It is more of a finesse thing with those compared to this. You saw how easy it is to manually tell if you're straight. You can check out bore taper with this too. It's just it's just so much easier than uh, trying to finesse with one of those spring-loaded gauges. I'm a little more of a, than a weekend warrior, so the average guy, you can be fine with that. Just please measure your cylinders. I don't care if you do it or you get a shop to do it for you. You will save yourself in the long run. If I were to put a stock piston in this, who knows how long it would have lasted. Would have been just Rock City, crack a skirt, and yeah, who knows. So anyway, guys. Hope you learned something, and till next time, turn out.